Sorry about that. No problem. All right. Good morning and welcome to the February 10th meeting of the Design Review Committee. My name is Amy Protsky and I am the chairman of the Design Review Committee. This open meeting of the Design Review Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of June 16, 2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during this state of emergency. All members of the DRC are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows the Design Review Committee to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to the Northrop remote meetings on the YouTube link via the link. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Um, let's see. The design review committee works to preserve the historic land uses and structures and promote architectural and ecological considerations for the betterment of the community. We are an advisory board, and as such, the design review process is intended to provide guidance to the applicant in the development of the site and design of the building. The DRC does not guarantee approval of any spe special permits needed, as those can only be granted by the Special Permit Granting Authority. I will now confirm member access to this meeting. Um, Lisa Maselli? Here. Dario Damar? Here. Okay. Um, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Um, Bob Federico? Here. Okay, thanks. Meeting ground rules. The chair will invite each speaker or applicant on the agenda by name to make a presentation and speak to their application. Participants will provide their full name and hold until their name is called. Each speaker will be asked to mute their phone or computer when not speaking and to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minute meetings, meaning minutes. Those responding will be asked to wait for the, it, until the floor is yielded to them by the chair. Speakers who wish to respond to the comments of others do so through the chair, taking care to identify themselves. Each vote taken by the board or committee will be conducted by roll call vote. It is now 8.37. And first on the agenda is um, the minutes. Dave is connecting right now, so I'll give him a minute to connect. I do wanna thank Michelle for going back and watching the videos and uh, Michelle Silly, and she did some great minutes and she had to go back and watch the last three videos. Thank you, Michelle. I'll pull up while Dave's connecting. I'm gonna I'll pull up. Does anybody, well, I'll pull up the first set of minutes. Let's see, we know that could take me a bit. <laughs> Whoops, where are you? One sec. I only had very minor changes. Oh. Dave, are you able to, um, we just can't hear you. No, you're not. Okay, thanks. You didn't miss anything but the blurb at the beginning. But I did mention we're going to start out of order and do the minutes in case someone has to drop off because um, Michelle spent time doing that three sets of minutes. Did um, every, anybody have any changes or to the July 14 minutes? Uh, no, not the first one. The next two, I did a little teeny thing. I just had quick ones if, if you guys don't mind. Um, I don't mind. I don't. I don't know if I want to be called Chair Peretzky. Like I know on the planning board, it's just Ms. Peretzky or Ms. Martinek. So I don't know. It doesn't, I don't have to be called Chair Peretzky in the minutes. So I just wanted to change those to Ms. I don't, it doesn't really matter, but. There you go. Found one of them. 
Okay, and then on page two, um, this paragraph where it says, Mr. Reardon said he understood that this is an industrial people in an industrial zone. I think it's just supposed to be building, an industrial building in an industrial zone. You guys agree? Yep, that's one of mine that I caught. And then it's just changing from chair to Ms. Paretsky, I think is the rest of it. Oh, and this is um, for Lisa, old new business. I think Ms. Maselli, you, you abstained from the minutes. So I just changed Ms. Maselli who had not read them. I just wrote abstained. Okay. And that's it for those. Does anybody else have any changes to the July? I think, close your eyes. July 14th, 2021 minutes. The, the, that one that you got for the industrial people is one of the ones that I found too. Yeah, I thought that was industrial project. Yeah, it could be project. I just, I thought it was building, but we can change it to project. Yep, that might make sense. I was just trying to figure out what made sense. I didn't go back and listen to all three meetings. Fair enough, okay. <laughs> but project could be either way. Anybody else? Do I have a motion to approve the July 14th, 2021 minutes as amended? Motion moved. I second. Okay, motion has been moved and seconded. I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Lisa Maselli? Aye. Dario? Aye. Um, Dave? Aye. Okay, the minutes have been Approved. I'm gonna stop sharing these. The next minutes were December 16th. I'm gonna scroll through fast. Don't close your eyes, see if I have any changes. <laughs> oh, I did. All right, do you want me to go first or does anybody else wanna go first? You're doing a good job. Okay. So I'll go down to page three. Second paragraph. Ms. Nicholas said, Nicholas said they meet with the applicant. I think the word was just missing. Yep. That's the one I found. And this sentence was kind of out of context. I didn't know we were talking about closing the meeting or continuing it and I just took out that sentence because I felt it was out of place. Yeah, it would sound like we're voting on approval as opposed to how we wanted to proceed with. Right, but it, and even at that point, we weren't really voting or continuing. So I just took it out. And then in this paragraph, I just think there was an or missing. And then Ms. Nicholas said that it is allowed provided that this is documented. I think there are just a couple words that were missing. And that's all I had. Did you have, did anybody else have any changes? Is this the, is this the meeting we had? Can you kind of go back, uh, go up the, the pages so I can read them real quick? It's December 16th. Yeah, mine's on the computer. So I can't get it off right now. Okay, you can go faster. That's um, page one. Okay, next. Okay, next. Um, all right, what I don't, I don't know that it was on this meeting or if, I thought I'd ask what the square footage was of the building. That's at the next meeting Okay. on the 30th. Okay, then. then everything's fine in this one. Okay, everybody else good? No. Okay, so um, is there a motion to approve the December 16th, 2021 minutes as amended? Uh, I'll make a motion. Was that you, Dave, or Aunt Dario? 
Who moved? Dario. Seconded. Okay. I'll take a roll call vote. Lisa Maselli? Aye. Dario DeMar? Aye. And Dave Heron? Aye. Okay, the meeting's minutes have been approved. Third set of minutes. I can start again if you guys want. The same um, idea, I'll mention it to, to Michelle. Um, I don't mind be calling Ms. Brutsky versus chair. So for the December 30th minutes, I had page two. That's where, Lisa, you asked about the size of the building. And um, I think you said it was approximately 3,200 square feet per duplex. Okay. And the next page, I just changed one sentence. She asked if specific plantings be used for the ground cover in the backyard could be added to the <laughs> notes put on the sidebar of the plan. The sentence was a little confusing to me, so I just I just switched around some of the words. That's fine. Okay, and that's all I have for changes. I have none in addition to that other one. Nope. Okay. Does anybody else have any changes to the minutes? And if you do, and if you didn't have time to read it, I could, I could um, save these for the next one. Anybody else have changes? I don't know. Okay. All right. So if there are no other changes, um, I move we approve the December 30, 2021 minutes as amended. Is there? Second. Okay. Okay. Take a roll call vote. Lisa Maselli? Aye. Dario Damari? Aye. Dave Veron? Aye. Okay. Minutes are all done. All right. Let me see. Next on the agenda, we had the two family guidelines. These were started back in 2018, but due to different, different reasons, we still have them in front of us. <laughs> so, so what I was thinking of doing, and I don't know if anyone feels the same, um, I was just gonna show the, I went out and took pictures of duplexes in the town. And I just wanna show them really quick and see if anyone had any anything that they thought about the duplexes that should be included in the de design review guidelines for two family dwellings, or, um, or we could just go through the two family dwellings. I could share it and we could read the different um, suggestions and see if we agree with the criteria that's, that's in the guidelines either way. But, but why I did took pictures of the North Borough duplexes is because when I read the two family um, dwelling guidelines, I didn't feel the pictures actually match what we have in North Borough. I felt that they were from the city and, and they would have to, a lot of them is where it said encouraged. I would definitely not encourage for North Borough. Are you planning on using those photos in our guidelines? Oh, well, you'd have to ask permission. Like our old guidelines, a lot of the encouraged photos were actually in town. So I think Kathy said if we use them, we would have to ask permission. I'm not sure. I wouldn't use any of them as discouraged because you wouldn't want to do that to someone. I think but, you're also gonna, if you do that, you're also going to have to go through legal as well because you're going to go into a legal quagmire of like and dislike, and you're going to ruffle some feathers. Well, I was only going to use the like. I wasn't going to use any dislikes. 
Oh, just you need know, ruffle feathers of the people who didn't get the likes. <laughs> yeah, that, they was, didn't. That, that is where our, when I want to hear from the rap you brought named Judy in. I think what's her name? Judy Barrett. I'm getting a lot okay. of feedback. I can't hear you that well. It's hard to hear, Dave. Uh, hang on. Can you hear me now? Yep. Is better? Um, that was just... oh, nope. <laughs> what is going on? Can you hear me now? Oh. Gotcha. Zoom all day Can you hear me now? No, there's feedback. I don't know why. Jim, do you know why he'd be getting feedback? Um, I don't believe it's anything on our end it might be a microphone but you said you were zooming fine yesterday yeah um, I was on zoom all morning do you, you have a, a headset no nope. i'm doing it right now um can you hear me now yes okay um judy said you know that that using photos in town caused a lot of problems uh that's why she recommended for us going outside of town and not using anything in town. And I'm just voicing what she said. Yeah. And the email we got from her just said that she didn't find a lot in North Pro because most of the duplexes were close to the city. But but we can definitely, we'll check with legal counsel. Like the first 2012 guidelines have a lot of the commercial buildings in North Pro. Yeah, As I mean, I'm, I'm fine yeah. with whatever. I just don't want to walk into a legal quagmire. Yep, definitely, definitely. We'll definitely check and make sure. But these are just the pictures of duplexes in North Pro. And, and like I thought they were a lot different than the ones in the two family guidelines. And they match the character of North Pro because we're not a city where, you know, you've got the small lots and you have to stack the driveways and stack the cars. Like I think in North Pro, at least in my opinion, people want, each to have a garage because we're like a commuter town and people have cars and so I, these were just some of the duplexes I found in town the latest is um can you see did I share my screen yes the latest this is the one on 399 Hudson Street so it was the last duplex that was done it's a good it's a good comparison to see this, the drawing, the artistic rendition and the actual application. Although it's probably not done, right? It's probably got, is this, is this completed and people are living in it now or are they still getting it ready? Um, I don't know. I, the picture was taken yesterday, but they both sold. So I think people have moved in, but I don't know. Right. I think they're done because they sold. Because it's interesting to see how the detail in the drawing to the left and then to the right, the center that has the two white, um, hmm, I don't know, yes, that, that they just look like these two white boxes. Maybe it's just because of the photograph, but. So the drawing actually has nothing to do with what was built. The proportions of the drawing show, you know, 18 inches above the garage doors and the garage doors being very narrow, and the actual garages look like they're probably 50% wider than what's in the drawing. So it's very deceptive right. with respect to what got built, what was drawn. In my opinion, they have nothing to do with each other because the one on the left looks really nice. And the one on the right, the pitches went from 1212 to 412. It's, it's a lie. It's, it's not the same. I agree completely. Those are not the same at all. Right. And and this <laughs> might be, would it change if I made it bigger? Because I made this picture fit. So oh, no, it's the like, proportion. It has nothing to do with it, Amy. That picture okay. the, look at the windows. There's six windows between the gable on the one on the right. There's three on the one on the left. Look at the proportions of right. It's one foot, maybe 18 inches above the garage doors, and they're real tight. The one on the left, it's three feet above the garage doors, and there's two feet on each side of the garage doors. It has nothing to do with each other than a concept. And the concept 
falls apart with respect to what was drawn. Okay. Is there something we can do in our checkoff sheet that the concept actually matches the building? Like, is that a problem that? Yeah, if, if they don't build what's on the drawings, you don't approve it. <laughs> you can't draw something and build something else. Yeah. Yeah. Did they go was, for, can they go in and ask to have a change that we don't really see? I don't know. I'm just commenting on, on the fact that they have nothing to do with each other because the, the building on the left looks really nice. I yeah, the, the one on the left is like, you know, custom built, you know, piece. The one on the right looks like a builder special. Yep. Right. So when we review the drawings, do we ask for, I don't know, like you said, we just make sure that the concept matches the building. Is that what we say to them? But, no, but once they build it, we're not going to make it tear it down. The same. Huh? Is this supposed to be the same building? Is yeah, it same? is. There's no way. How did this go from one to the other? There's a breakdown somewhere in, in in our process here, or or after it went from us to whoever else. There's a massive breakdown here. I mean, look at the molding on the gables on the drawing, and look at the molding on the gables in what got built. Um, Bob, do we know who do we ask? I don't know where the breakdown happened because when it came to the planning board, I think we saw the same drawing, the same sketch. I guess, I don't know. I don't know how to fix it where, unless we ask for more than just a sketch. I don't oh. know if anyone ever got the specs, you know, with the. The, um, the plans that were submitted for approved building um, matched what was approved by the ZBA. So the paperwork was fine. Somewhere in the execution, um, you know, between planning and building is, is where it happened. Um, you know, that's probably the builder's fault. Um, I don't know if at this point you can go back to probably the planning board because they were the special permit granting authority and, and say, you know, oops, or, or you know, any, I don't even know if there's a legal way to get some sort of a variance or something like that. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a difficult situation. Um, you know, I, I have to agree with both Dave and Dario that, you know, from the concept plan to the, to the finished product, you know, your, your proportions are off, your gables are off, your roof pitches are off. Um, you know, the scale of the driveways, I um, mean, the scale of the garage doors, um, to be honest with you, in the original design, those look like single car garages, not two car garages. Great. To, to be completely honest. I mean, I'm just going by the image. You know, I'm not scaling anything. I'm not measuring anything. Um, but, you know, adding that extra eight feet is going gonna, is gonna to mess up your, um, your gable pitches from a 12 to a, well, those gables look like maybe a six pitch maybe an eight on a good day, um, but certainly not a 12. Can I ask you a question? Because I don't know this answer. Is there anybody on the planning board who has the knowledge that uh, Dario, myself, or uh, Bob have? No. But Fred um, is at all the meetings. Like Fred is our staff and he reviews everything. And maybe this sketch, maybe the planning board you know, I just did these for pictures. That's a picture I had. We, uh, I can go back and we can check exactly what was submitted to the planning board. Maybe between design review and planning board, something came in that changed everything. Maybe you show the design review board what looks nice and then you build the crap you want to build and everything, everything's happy from the builder's perspective because they showed us a pretty picture and didn't build a pretty building. No. And I think that's kind of what happened. It went to um, design review twice and then it came quickly to the planning board and said, oh, here's a duplex. It was approved by design review. And we all said, okay, exactly. it looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I don't know. I'd have to go back. He approved but, plan A and they built plan B. That, that's oh. what looks like happened. Because, and I wasn't involved in it, but I promise you those have nothing to do with each other architecturally, proportionally, aesthetically, functionally, uh, exactly what Bob said. Yeah, Dara, you, you, you're spot on, but unfortunately, after it comes out of our hands, we have nothing to do with it. It's done. Exactly. So, lesson learned. I think I think whatever they submit to us, somehow the planning board has to see what we approved and make sure it's the same thing that they're yeah. looking at. But, but the thing is, once they get it, they don't have, I mean, if it comes back to a change, they don't have our expertise. There's nobody there Fair to enough. really... I don't want to use the police it because it's not a police state here, but to have that knowledge to know that, hey, when they take a pretty picture and change it, this is what the result is. They have no idea of that knowledge. Yep. It's a fundamental bait and switch. Exactly. And they have no clue. So right. I don't know if I was on the board then or Michelle. I think Michelle. and But when she brought it to us, I think it might have just been the concept plan, but I'll have to go back and look. But that's all we get. We don't we we only get a concept. We're not going to get, you know, the whole um, site plan with the we'll dimension. Get a site plan, but we're not going to get the building, you know, two by four construction, the whole bit. We don't get that. In the site plan review, we don't get that. We're just the overview. That's all we get. And then it goes on from us. We're not we're not looking at you know two by four construction, two by six construction. We're not looking at that type of uh a breakdown that's that we don't get that and david i don't think we need that all we need is no. the basic floor plan and the elevations because we're looking at an elevation and and you don't need to know what's behind it as much as the fact that it doesn't look like what got built and we, so, did, and we get that and we did have that so i don't know where again that's where i go right back to where was the breakdown because we had that and after that, something got switched big time. And the where, planning where board. Right and the planning board was supposedly got exactly what you guys got. So that's, that's, that's yeah. not that's not what was built because we. Oh, have I know. The is the broken piece there, Amy? Right. So I guess. If any, yeah. If anything changes, I think if it's if there's any change from what was submitted to the design review committee to what's getting built, if they're gonna change it, the process might say, if it's minor, and they can determine minor, because I don't think we have to get into you know tiny little things, but if there's any, any changes, in this case, to Bob's point, they added, I don't know, 16 feet to the width of the building, if you look at everything, even the space between the gables, that's not a minor change, <laughs> that's, that's chickens and oranges. I mean, we're not even in the fruit category at that point. And, and if there's any changes to what's submitted to the design review committee, and I'll say substantive changes, because we don't have to get in the micro, we're gonna use a different gutter, the downspout, that, 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 that doesn't matter. But this is this has nothing to do with what got built other than it kind of sort of does the same thing. There's two garages on the right, gables in the middle, a bunch of doors and windows on the inside, but the proportion, the scale, the look, the feel is big. It's big. The garages went from, in this case, 16 feet to 24 feet. The, if the I was to go out and measure. Yeah, the, to the total feel of this is totally different. It lost the charm completely. Right. Dario, I agree 100% here. Right. I guess... Bob, we'll have to figure out where it fell apart. I don't know. You know, I'll see what was submitted to the planning board. But I think we got what you guys got because it went quickly. It went from your meeting to our meeting. And um, and it got approved. So we'll, we'll see where it fell apart to see, see how we can make sure it doesn't happen again. Amy? Yeah. Is, is, there, a, is there an area, like I said before, in... in we approve, you approve, the builder starts to build. He's obviously put more height on the building as well because you can see the space above the doors. But is there a way that they could do a change order and then get the change order approved? Without coming back to the boards? Yeah. I, and that would be Bob or Fred. I don't know what happens after it leaves you and after it leaves us, I don't know what happens. Would they do that, Bob? If, if they were to do a substantial change, 
you know, and again, we have to discuss what substantial would be like Dario said, um, you know, the special permit granting authority was the per, was the group that approved the drawings. Okay? okay. If what's getting built is going to be substantially different, um, they should probably go and this is just my, my, my theory. <clears throat> they should probably go back to the design review and go back to um, planning board to change the amend the special permit. Exactly. Because the, the, the DRC is advisory to the planning board and the planning board uses the DRC's comments to either approve or deny. And I think you'd have to go all the way back. If there's a substantial change, you'd have to go back to the DRC. <clears throat> and, um, you know, again, put it back up to the, to the, to the planning board. You know, the, the, the question is at what point in the process do they do this? I mean, when they start framing, um, you know, sometimes conditions in the field necessitate changes. And that's not much of an excuse, but what I see a lot of the times is once the developers get the approval, they just go ahead and build it. Um, and it's very difficult to catch them, you know, midstream, you know, in, in mid construction to say, you know, you got to stop and, you know, go back to the boards because, you know, what, what you're building is not on the plans, you know, or it's vastly different from the approved plans, I should say. Right by the time you notice it's probably framed, it's like, whoa, what happened there? That's, yeah. Um, and, and as you know, uh, framers work pretty darn fast. And uh, in terms of, you know, inspections, um, you know, from the time that uh, the, the building department looks at the foundation and the backfill and everything else, the next time we're out there, is when the electric, the plumbing, the HVAC has all been roughed in, the siding, the roofing, and the windows are installed. Okay, so that's a, in terms of the building code, that, that's a fairly large gap, and there's a ton of work that's done <clears throat> between foundation and the rough inspection and the rough frame inspection. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a thing on the inspectors. I think this has to be the plans that are approved for construction have to match what the DRC approved. It's that simple. It's not, you know, Bob can't be sitting sitting there. If they need to move something 13 inches because they hit some crazy rock, or that's not a big deal, but that's not what this was. And this wasn't the framer saying, Oh, geez, I need to add six feet for, so both cars can fit. I need to double the interior windows because I want to turn that pantry into another bedroom. I mean, th this thing is, is obnoxiously larger than what was submitted. And what that was submitted and what was approved to be built at that point is the breakdown. Not once it's getting built. You can't, you're building, that framer is working off of drawings and he may be off by an inch or two but he's not adding four and six feet randomly at will <laughs> because he just can't. So somewhere those drawings change from what we see on the picture to what got built. And that change is where, where the breakdown is. Not anything once you start construction, because you're going to start construction on, a, on an exact set of drawings. And if someone says, hey, Bob, you don't mind if I add 20 feet to the building, he's, gonna, he's not going to sit there and say, no problem, go ahead. <laughs> he's going to say, no, you got to go back to planning and zoning. <laughs> All right, well, we'll have to go back and see what happened because I don't, I don't even know if the planning got board got more than the sketch too. It was like, everybody is like, wow, this is the nicest duplex we've seen. Good luck, go ahead, you know? So we'll have to, we'll have to figure that out. I really don't know. Because who was, um, who was the builder for this too? I think he sold it. It was a guy from Shrewsbury. Was it a guy from Shrewsbury? But then he sold it to Quality Framing, I think, who has built some houses in Southboro. There, 
I'd have to follow the, the path, but I know, I think when it came to us, it was a different person than who built it because they sold it. And maybe that's where it fell apart. Maybe the guy got the permit, sold it to someone else who said, oh, you know, I'll make some tweaks there. Because yeah, this can't happen again. There's no way. Yeah. I don't remember. Was it Espero? I, who, who the guy was in, 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 I don't know who it was. We'd have to look it up too. Yeah. And that's good to know too. So if they come back to the board with another one, you can say, hey, this is what you did last time. You can't do this again. I think so. I like that idea, Amy. Yeah. And, and it's hard to believe the stories we get on the planning board. And I'm not, but when it first came to us, it was like, I really need the duplex because I want one side for my family and the other side for my disabled child. Like, that's what we get all the time. Yeah, but that, then, that should have no bearing on it. You could say, I want one for Hitler's nephew and one for the Communist Party. We're, we're not allowed to opine on politics. I know, but we're, that's what we try to say. They like, please approve our duplex because... We're going to follow this plan and I need it for my family. So I, I, they, they I, try to like, I, I know it has nothing to do with it, but I'm just it, saying those are the stories we get. Right. Right. And I think, I think shame on us for being that naive. Yeah. Okay. So I oh. even noticed when he cleared the trees, you know, they were supposed to clear so many and then come back and get earthworks to clear the fourth lot. And it just went all down at once. Like there's no coming back a lot of the time. You know, so. it's very interesting that you say that that the plans were sold, the plans and the permit were sold. So that yeah. they figured that well, we'll we are kind of we are kind of making it look like that, and we're gonna just make some more, you know, more space. So okay. yeah. Well, we'll move on and uh, but we'll get to the bottom of what happened and who did it, you know. I, I, just somehow where it fell apart. But my my reason for some of these pictures were the guidelines I felt the design for the two families, some of the some of the criteria was so specific that some of the buildings that we think are nice in Northboro wouldn't fall under the guidelines the way they were written. Like with garages on front. But these these look okay because they put, you know, different doors and but our guidelines right now say you have to have 20% windows in the front and it can't include garages, but that wouldn't work. But when people go through this neighborhood, they say, oh, I like those. So I guess that's what I was trying to, trying to say when I look at these pictures, the guidelines are tricky because some are very specific, yet, yet they don't match what we do in Northboro. Can I just jump in real quick, Amy? Sure. Thank you. Um, you got to be careful with the 20% window mandate in the front because yes. windows come under the energy code. Yep. And, you know, if you're loading up one side of the wall um, with windows, that's going to affect uh, the energy requirements and the energy demands of the house. The other thing that's coming up is that the state is moving towards a net zero energy um policy yep and it's 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 coming sooner than later um and <clears throat> that's going to have an effect on windows as well i mean you're obviously going to have to have higher performance windows but in terms of the you know which direction the walls of the house face um they're not going to be real happy if you're putting a lot of windows on the north side of a um of a building okay they're going to want it on the west and the south side because it's it, the north and the east side is just going to be too cold. Um, so I would, you know, in terms of the twenty percent, I would I would allow yourself a little variable for that, um, depending on the on the current energy code. And the and the thing is, the energy code has gone to a sliding scale. It's no longer um, a code. It's it's a uh, it's a set of um, uh, what do they describe it now? It's a set of hard guidelines, basically. Okay, it is wrapped up in the energy code, but it's a, it's um, you know they're, they're firming up all the guidelines in terms of what they want to do. Uh, so the basic structure of it is different, but the intent is still there. And you know, going to a net zero, that's going to will probably have an effect on the placement and the amount of windows on any given elevation. 
Um, the other thing I would just caution or advise is that, um, you know, it's probably okay to talk about the structures themselves, where, you know, what was uh, presented, what was approved versus what was built. Um, I, would, I would suggest that um, if you're gonna be using names, yeah. um, those people who are named should be here um, at the meeting. You mean the yeah. builder? And, and yes. If, if you're talking names and applicants and things like that, um, you're, you, it could be perceived that you're talking about them behind, your, behind their back and that would not be fair. And I think that would cause, um, that would probably cause some concern for some people. So we should have had the builder who did this here today on this, on this piece. If, if, if you're going to talk about it, you're going to name names. Yes. Okay. If, I won't name any names. If and you're actually, talking about it and not naming names, I think you're probably all set. But okay. um, if, if, if it's, you know, you're talking this person, that person, you know, and, and, and who was in control and who was in command and why did they do this and why did they do that? You know, there's, you know, you, it, 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 it could be it could be an issue. I'm just saying okay. that I, if I was a builder and you're talking about stuff behind my back, um, I would, I, you know, I would I'd be looking for answers. Okay. To be honest. Well, both of these pictures, I'm trying to say that the Board of Leaders in Northport did a good job versus mm -hmm. what we were asking for in the guidelines. So I was trying to say, like, um, like I think this, they did a great job with the one driveway. It's narrow mm -hmm. and it spreads out. Yeah. And they kept a lot of the trees. Yeah. And, uh, and for our duplexes, too, uh, the pictures and the guidelines show top you know, they're very specific, but I felt like these are older duplexes, but they fit in the neighborhood. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is that our duplex guidelines were overly, they had too much information and too many specifics where I think if you say it has to fit the character of the neighborhood, the massing and the height, you know, I don't think we need so many regulations, like 20% of the windows have to be in the front because, because it doesn't fit with every lot in every building. I felt right. a lot of the guidelines were very too specific and we might get unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. Or I think like these, they match the era, they match the neighborhood. You wouldn't even and, like when you're driving by, you wouldn't even know it was a duplex. And what's interesting, Amy, is the three on the left. Yep. None of them would meet the new duplex guidelines, even though they're nice. Well, that's because what I was thinking. Yeah. The ones on the left say, our guidelines say, oh, you have to have an overhang, a porch, or this over the main entry. And you take any cape that was made 100 to 300 years ago, none of them have an overhang over the front porch. Not that it's not nice, but all of a sudden we've, we've become God here. And, and, and I think to your point, being contextual, fitting in the neighborhood, human scale, not that that I want any kind of subjective control because there's nothing worse than subjective where it's my opinion versus somebody else's chocolate or vanilla. That that can get real ugly real quick. But none of the ones on the left would, would meet our guidelines, yet they're all very nice. They're the right scale. They fit in with Northborough. <laughs> there, there are things that we'd, we'd like to see. So it's really hard to put in exact rules on what you want without just saying pick from one of these four floor plans. And if you don't pick those, you're not going to build it in our town. Um, you, you know, because it's just, it's one of those, you're pointing out an, an exact example of it that, you know, they're nice, they're, they're nice, cute buildings for this area. They're, they're, there's nothing wrong with them. There's, there's nice vegetation and, um, you know, the drives are good, whether they're in the front or on the side. Right. That's what that was. Yeah, that's the point I wanted to. And then I wanted hopefully everybody to go back and look at the design review guidelines again for the duplexes. And there were a lot of items I was crossing out or maybe, you know, I know Judy worked really hard on them, but maybe we use a checklist of ideas of things we could use like bay windows, bow windows, but but not so specific. That, that we get the unintended consequences. Yes, Bob? Um, I, I haven't read the complete two, two family guidelines, but 
my my impression is that what Judy prepared is advisory to you folks in terms of what you may or may not want to look for. And I may be redundant here, but um, I, I, I don't know if what Judy gave to the town needs to be taken as, you know, the Bible, you know, and, you know, you know, she, I, I would su suggest, um, and, and I could be way off, but I would suggest that maybe, you know, take bits and pieces where you think this would fit in Northboro, this wouldn't fit in Northboro, and just use it as a guideline. Um, because like you said, sometimes depending on the neighborhood, you're going to want a lot of gables, okay? Or in some other neighborhoods, you're not going to want a lot of gables because the house is going to really stick out like a sore thumb. So I would, I would suggest um, leaving yourself some flexibility um, in terms of, you know, what, what is a hard and fast rule versus, um, you know, guidelines to consider, okay? I mean, I'm just saying allow yourself some flexibility because we've got a variety of neighborhoods and um, not, not for nothing, but from what I'm seeing, and I'm not a design expert, but what I'm seeing with a lot of these duplexes going up is they're all starting to look alike. Right. No, we you definitely know? do. I think when I read the guidelines, I know there were advisory, but, but as a design review <clears throat> person, I'm going to read these guidelines and say, well, like her, some of the statements were the driveways, you shall have one driveway and stack <clears throat> the cars. Like that wouldn't work at my house. Never mind. That doesn't work at my house. Never mind. If you have two families sharing right. a parcel, then there's no way in North Pearl people are going to want <laughs> one long driveway and you stack your cars. There were just certain, like, it wasn't all of them. It was just some, I just wanted everybody to go back before the next meeting and, and maybe we can talk about the guidelines. And I think a couple things might have to be striked out because they're just too strict for North Pearl and they don't, <laughs> And a lot of the pictures, like there are a lot of pictures that say encouraged, encouraged, encouraged. And I looked at those pictures and they're from Boston. I'm like, I would not want to encourage that. And that's, this is what the guideline gets handed to the developer. So I don't want to waste their time getting a book that we're going to encourage one driver with stacked cars where that's not what I think I would want to see in North Bro. I just, I was hoping the committee could go back and read them and look at the what we have in North Bro and read them and say, okay, the ones that don't, the ideas that don't fit in North Bro, maybe we should strike just to begin with. So, so that builders don't waste their time on things that we're never going to approve. You know, it's your point, Amy. I did get a, I get a PM on my Facebook from Damon Amato uh, last week and asking for the guidelines. And he said he tried to get them at downtown hall for duplexes, but uh, he didn't want to bother Fred because he was so busy. I, I invited him to come to one of our meetings because I can't do any more than that. And there are builders that are looking for that kind of guidance. And that, uh, Bob makes a great point. What Judy gave us was a, a framework that we could probably take and change to happen in North Grove with North Grove's neighborhoods and such. So I think that what you're doing today is perfect. That's why we're discussing it. And okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. One more point before I forget. Bob talked about the, the windows and where the placement of the windows are. And when you have duplexes, aren't you, aren't there walls that are just no windows at all? And, and does that apply to the to a duplex as, as it does to a house, Bob? Because there are walls that have no windows, even even a sidewall. Well, there are my yeah, okay, yeah. Um, there are sidewalls um, that have sometimes have no windows at all, okay. Um, but yeah, there's a certain under the building code. There's a certain amount of visible light transmittance that's required in any given room. There's also a certain amount of natural ventilation that's required in any given room. Um, so it's a balance. Um, Obviously, if you've got a duplex, the center wall separating the two units won't have any um, windows in it, obviously, because it's a firewall. Um, but, you know, you'll see an occasional building where the gable ends don't have any windows or maybe one small one. Um, you know, typically you're going to want to see windows in the front and the back, you know, the front for the street and the back for, you know, being able to look out into the backyard. You know, most of our lots here are primarily wooded. You know, you're not looking into somebody else's property. You, know, you want to enjoy, you want to 
see what nature has to offer. Um, so yeah, you could have some walls that have no windows in it, and you can have some windows that some walls that are entirely windows. Um, but it all has to work within the framework. When you do an energy audit on a house to be built, they take all of the solid walls and all the windows and all the doors into account, and they put it into a matrix and they score it. Um, and it ne needs to meet a, uh, a certain score. Uh, if it doesn't, the designer has to go back and, and, and respect windows or, or reallocate where they're, where they're going to be installed. Do we, have to, Chair, do we have to learn some of that so that when we're looking at a plan or is, who's, you know? No, you, you, yeah, you guys, yeah, you don't have to go to window school. Or energy, <laughs> thank, energy school. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through it. It's 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 pretty torturous. Um, uh, no, we 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 we'd let you know. All right. No. that's helpful to us when we're looking at a plan too to say, you know, here's here's something that is coming up with compliance. Mm -hmm. Much like the sidewalk width that's changing because of the um, the, this is the complete streets policy that we that we um, agreed mm -hmm. to. So we're doing some net zero. Um, different towns are advancing differently in Massachusetts. Um, we're, we're doing a school in Wellesley that's going to be net zero. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's stuff that, that really shouldn't be our concern. We're, we're really here to look at aesthetics and scale. Um, it'll be up to the developers. I won't even say the builders because sometimes it's not the builder, it's the developer who may hire a builder, but whoever owns that, that parcel and is developing the property will have to comply with the codes. And I think to Bob's point, we don't want to specify all glass on a certain wall that makes it really hard to meet the net zero codes, but we can say we'd like glass on the front elevation you know, as opposed to um, you know, the building that got built on the corner of Brigham and 20, where the front elevation on Brigham is a bunch of compressors, a transformer, and a, a pile of electrical meters all facing main, the, the main street. I mean, that that's just, you're just appalling. And that's what the DRC should be preventing, not, not code issues. We also in here at point out on, on the design on page eight of our design code that you you must have side windows, you know, windows on the side of the house. And again, getting into those type of details can get you into trouble because if the side of my house is facing a gas station or, or something I don't want to look at, <laughs> I'd rather not put windows there and, and to Bob's point, face the trees or at least the main street. Um, one of the things that, that I saw during um, presenting to a myself on the other side of the table, I was presenting to the DRB and they were doing in houses and they were saying, geez, you're building a real big house next to little houses. So they had, and it goes again, back to Bob, every neighborhood is a little bit different. So when we get into contextual, I think that's probably the best word that you want to be in context to what your neighbors have. If you go in, in my neighborhood, it's, you know, I don't even, care for it actually it's a little too yuppified for me but they're they're all kind of big box houses the cape's not going to fit there and if you go in a neighborhood with a bunch of capes and raised ranches my house doesn't fit there and they're both in Northboro. so what they did in this town was and it was amazing because the developer tried to trick the town and and got the um the well-deserved spanking because they said, oh, yes, in regard to your design guidelines, here's a picture of the two houses. Here's our house. Look, they're the same. And then the, the Lisa or the, or the David on the DRC said, well, that's funny. I drove down the street yesterday, and the 27 other houses are le less than half the size of yours. Stop trying to trick us, cheat us, and insult our intelligence. It's not contextual. And, and I think that's where we go with this is if you're in a neighborhood with a bunch of little houses, then you fit in with that neighborhood. If you're in a neighborhood with a bunch of capes, kind of make it look like a cape. It doesn't have to be an exact copycat, but let it look like it, it fits in. It's contextual, which is the word we're really looking for, and contextual to the neighborhood, not to the town of Northboro. Because okay. you can find anything you want here. 
to say, oh, look, this is in Northboro. Right. right. We can say, and, and that's what we don't want. We don't want to say, let's let's match um, what's the place that took over Beezers. You know, we, we've got six of these. Let's put six more, you know, we, <laughs> right. because it, it's already here. Well, to that point, too, we just saw, what is it, 89 Hudson? And, 39, yep. Okay. Not here on the, not, no, our last meeting. Oh, 87. Okay. So, so when I asked, how is it, how is this in terms of the size to the neighborhood, knowing that there's smaller, smaller houses everywhere? And they use the example of the industrial building saying, well, the industrial building is very large. Therefore, we, we come in the middle. We balance that. Is that real? I mean, is that something that, uh, I mean, I would think the neighborhood is the neighborhood. You're not looking at industrial buildings in a, in a neighborhood that's still residential primarily. So when you take a, when you take a house down that's, I don't know, even a thousand square feet, and then you put in uh, 6,000 square feet, is that is that keeping with the neighborhood? That, that's a tough one, Lisa, because two lots down from there, I think it's like a little apartment complex. Yes, maybe. You know, and, and that's, the guy could say, well, here, next door to me is a parking lot for, uh, for the industrial. Then next to me is a development of, um, uh, I think there's apartments. I, I don't remember 100%. That, that's a really tough one because within, within, 300 feet of that, you probably have a little bit of everything. I don't know that there's really context there. That's a really difficult one to judge. If you say, oh, if we're heading north or east, the houses are small. But if you're heading west, it's it's commercial and 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 multifamily. So it's kind of a transition spot. So and then, think, then we have a street with uh, a cul-de-sac with the uh, um, we call homes right on it that are pretty sizable as well, too, right? Yeah, that's my point. It's you kind of have everything on, on that road there. That's that's the hard part about judging that one is there's there's so much around it that that if I fairly look to the left, it's one thing. If I fairly look to the right, it's something else. And and those get to be difficult. That's that's one where you know I kind of if it looks nice hold up the white flag and say, okay, um, but you can't, unless you want to draw a line by zoning, which you can do and say, this is the type of um, house that belongs in this zone, wherever that line is, you can stick to the zone then. So then if you, so, and I've asked this in the past to have a, a you know, Google Maps picture of it in the neighborhood, like here's the lot, here's the neighborhood, here's the uh, abutting properties, or even a, a bird's eye view of that to be able to better assess that because that is not what we're looking at is how it is in that neighborhood. So if you have, you know, do you put it into a certain range? Like, you know, we do radiuses, if it's in this radius, then this is the type of neighborhood that's at, or we're trying to change the neighborhood look like I know in Needham, a friend who lives on a, a beautiful street that was all originally capes and, and ranches and now they're all two two-story colonials. So they've gone and changed the whole neighborhood with the exception of three houses. So we're in that transition stage now where we're, we're getting a lot of older properties that people are selling um, and, and we're trying to create what I'm, I'm assuming with the master plan, we're trying to create a, an environmental feel for each of these neighborhoods. So how, you know, is it too much to ask to have that sort of a visual so that we better can understand where it does sit in the neighborhood? And then, you know, the layout of the can, um, the plan can be superimposed on top. I think that makes sense, Lisa. But in that particular case, again, if you drew a circle around it, half the buildings around will be bigger, half will be smaller. Then how do you pick? You can't favor one or the other. You know, if it's half and half, they're, they're kind of in the middle. Okay. You know, I, that's a tough one. If they're all small, then then there's no argument. If 82% of them are small, there's no argument. But that one was that was a weird one. You know, I'm not saying that 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 I'm in love with it or I like what they're doing, but it, it was hard to say. Gee, the neighbors on all four sides of you are are you know less than 2,000 square feet because that's not the case there. Okay. 
Okay. I mean, that's a tougher circle. If you drew a circle around that one, it would be hard to find a pattern. Well, like going back to like Lisa, what you said about Needham, like I do a tremendous amount of work in Needham, Newton, Weston, Wellesley, and they're taking all these small homes, knocking them down, and, and what I call building the mansions, where they'll knock two of them down sometimes and, and make it into one lot and putting these homes that like there's very little even green space on them left, and, and they're just unbelievable. And then all of a sudden you get this little home that's left over from the 40s or 50s next to it, and then, you know, another massive construction then little ones and it's just you know it's it's oh my god and you know slowly they're all turning into these large scale construction and that's just all over the place and there's no rhyme or reason to say yay or nay to them and they have to let them do what they're doing um you know so you you look at that and like what we're doing here it's not to the scale of what's going on over there but you know it, it, it happens, you know, and it's just, that's what's happening. But, you know, this is not as bad as, you know, that, like what you brought up over there. No, I'm just talking about trends, basically. Yeah. And that is a trend that's happening out that direction. You know, and it's happening here, but not as bad as what's going on over there. And not that it's bad, it's just that's what's going on. Right. Yeah, okay. it's... There's, there's one last thing on this, which gets a little bit um, awkward again. A lot of times, and, and I'm only doing it, this is on kind of my firsthand experience. We're, we're, we're putting up seven houses in, in Wareham um, on the ocean. And the, the people in the town, it's one of these exact same things that that Dave's talking about, and, and this is where we have to find out where Northboro wants to go with it. So next to our, our development, there's a, there's a, you know, nine acre parcel, you know, I don't know, it's worth $10 million or whatever. Um, on the other side, there's another nice one. They both have docks going into the water, but all the area around that are these tiny cottages and capes and, and raised ranches that, that are, you know, just cute, wonderful little neighborhoods. Now, what the, the town wants is they don't want to, and I'll put in quotes, increase the density of the area. So when we did one acre minimum lots, we took, and it goes back to what you're saying, Lisa, we took a 500 foot circle from where we were and listed all the properties, the size of the lots, and we were decreasing the density, which was the goal of the town. And in decreasing the density, you end up building bigger homes. But that was their goal. And that may not necessarily be our goal. So whatever our goal is, if you take a 500 foot circle around where we're trying to build, state our goals. And our goals may be, we want to be contextual. We want this house to fit in with the houses within 500 feet of here. That may be our goal, as opposed to Wareham's goal. Because Wareham is saying, oh, look, they're, they're one house per acre. We're four houses per acre. They're decreasing the density. That's what we want. So different towns want <laughs> different things. So if we want contextualism, which it sounds like that's what we want. I'm not saying that's what we want. But if that's what we want, we draw a five foot circle or a 500 foot circle, look at how big things are and see that this is in context with the, and then, then it takes it from subjectivity to, to pure math. And that's I, to back to Bob's point, we have different neighborhoods. So that will combine that in the, you know, it is in a 500 or 300 foot circle, you know, and, and I th actually I think ours was a thousand feet because 500 isn't that much when you have 150 foot minimum you know, frontage, but I think it was like a thousand feet or pick a, pick a dimension and then see that you fit within or a neighborhood that you fit within that. I think that's great. Because you, because you establish what it is you're looking for. Yes. You have ways now to be able to, to uh, measure. What, okay. One of the things I, I, I may want to suggest if I might um, is um, we have a new planner starting on March 7th. Um, and 
uh, I happen to know this individual and I've worked with, with her before. Um, and she's very good at doing this sort of thing. One thing I would recommend is if you have a draft that's been submitted to the town um, and you want to make changes to it, um, you know, be sure to incorporate Laurie into um, any kind of changes you may want to make to it. Uh, the other thing is, um, <clears throat> if you're going to be making changes to what was submitted, um, it would it be worthwhile going to or working with or deferring to um, the Master Plan in Implementation Committee? Okay. Um, I may be throwing a, monk, a wrench into the, into the works here, but, you know, I, you know we've, got, we've got two things going on here. We've got the master plan implementation, which took a long time. And then we had uh, Judy Barrett's work that took a long time. And I, I you know, with, with, I think the planner would be able to help mesh the two together so they're not in disagreement with each other. Are you talking about the duplex guidelines? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd wait for the master plan implementation committee because we're working on downtown and and we have like everything gets pushed to the master plan implementation committee. But when you're on the master plan implementation committee, there are some groups that are actually checking off boxes like um, they're bringing the Parks and Rec is bringing forth a dog park that people wanted, but they're not funneling it through the master plan implementation committee. And there are other things like I feel like we're focusing on downtown and I think how the duplexes fit in downtown maybe. But I think if you want the master plan implementation committee to look at duplexes, it could be years out. Like, I don't even see that on the radar. I agree with talking maybe to um, Lori about it, but but really, Judy did a great job with the bylaws, the um, guidelines. But what I'm thinking is. I just had a couple of things that I thought didn't fit with North Bro, so I, I'm going to strike them out, and I was going to send it to the whole board, so maybe at the next meeting we can discuss it. I can bring up all the suggestions. Say there's like 10 of them. We go down the list and say, yes, this meets North Bro. No, this doesn't meet North Bro. I mean, the Master Plan Implementation Committee is just a group of other residents just like we are, and and you guys have worked with duplexes and housing and and I don't know if any of anybody on that committee would know more than Dario. Well, Dario's on the committee and I'm on the committee. Um, but Dave has experience and Lisa has experience being on this board. So I don't know if anybody, I don't know what you think, Dario, but I, I think sending duplex guidelines off to them. I guess be adding more to the mix. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't suggesting sending it off to them for approval. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, if there's something in the master plan implementation, you know, understanding that the main goal right now is, is a downtown area, but, you know, it, it just refer to that so that whatever it is you guys decide to do as a DRC, okay, are at least in line with what, you know, the, the goals and objectives are for um, the, 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 you know, the, the, the town-wide master plan. That's all I'm saying. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying go to them for approval, right? <laughs> well, okay. I, I didn't I, want to throw I, more people in the mix. <laughs> well, so I'm, I'm all right. So I'm 90% I'm on board with, well, I'm probably half and half. I shouldn't say that. I, I am on the Master Plan Implementation Committee. We have the priority for the downtown. But to Bob's point, the right hand should always know what the left hand's doing here. Because if we're doing something that's totally... In, in you know off with it so we're not going to them for approval and we don't have to wait for them but if if they say hey master plan implementation committee here's what we're doing for the the duplexes if you got any thoughts or ideas let us know it could be informal but at least we can sit there and go oh geez you know what and i can think of one example amy we'd like to have sidewalks so maybe when we're doing this, all of a sudden, when they're building the duplexes, they have to put sidewalks in the front so eventually we can help with the walking across the entire town. And that wouldn't come up unless the right hand's talking to the left hand. And it's not like approval and slow it down and wait four years for something to happen. But even this conversation right now, because you and I are cross-pollinating, Amy, 
it's something that I can tell you right now from the Master Plan Implementation Committee's perspective, I would put a guideline in this to say, oh, by the way, it'd be nice to have a sidewalk in the front because we eventually want to have the town of Northboro be walkable. And that's 100% in line with what Bob's saying. But to your point, we have a focus downtown right now on the master plan, but we don't want to lose sight of other things that are happening that, that should eventually all tie back together. It's, it's, there's too many balls in the air to ignore the rest of them. Okay. That sounds that good. I thought, I thought you meant like sending them the guidelines and having them read them and. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just right hand, left hand. But, but I think, Bob, I, you see, I think something really good came out of this too, because there is something we're trying to do there that ties into this. And, and the fact that, that it got brought up, we can, we can make these guidelines try to, be in sync with with the rest of the town well it's you know it's with today's everything is changing these days you know and you know if you're talking about the future look of the town and things like that i just think it would be wise to you know at least recognize what everybody else is doing so it, you know, <clears throat> i hate to use the cliche but make sure the ship is sailing in the right direction you know and they're all going together uh that that's all i'm saying um because think, you know, yeah Yes. And I think we learned something else, too, about right hand and left hand. Amy, when you showed us the picture of the rendering and what got built, that's another right hand, left hand not communicating. Right. Here, here the DRC says, this is beautiful. We love it. Build it. And then we get this piece of junk because we're not communicating. We have to have a process where if one of the other groups changes it whoever had a comment on it before it got changed should go back to the people the advisory committee whether it's concom or or water overlay if you're going to make a significant change go back through the process so that we don't drop a ball okay Mike, can i ask um again because we know that 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 the permit changed hands is there something in the approval from the planning board or from the ZBA that can specify that if, if the project is sold before it's created, um, that they have some contact and come before the board? Or is that too far reaching? The, the, um, the special permit, unless otherwise stated, goes with the property. Exactly. So if you have an approved plan with a, an approved applicant um, and then they decide to change midway through or partway through the process, um, the new owners or, or whoever is coming in new to the project is responsible to, to, to stay with that original um, special permit decision. Correct. Okay, so but how do we, how do we, oh, you know, how do we prevent, we talked about in the beginning, how do we prevent this sort of thing from happening again? Is there a, is there a vehicle or a way to um, put in that now that it's changed hands, yes, it does go with the land, but you still have to conform to what was agreed to. That's the universal yeah. understanding. That, that's, yeah. you know, you, you shouldn't, you know, contractors and developers, they, they know that. Everybody knows that Lisa, it broke yeah. down with us, not with the developer. We, had something at the DRC and it got changed and it doesn't matter who the developer was when it got changed it never came back and that's right. not up to the developer it's up to us to enforce that we, we have to figure out where the failure was yeah there was a failure somewhere and the number one step is to figure out where that failure was that okay. has to be identified once that failure is identified then we can move forward to figure out what can be done until the failure is identified, we have no idea. Right. How will we do that? That that's someone has to find that failure. That that's out of you know. Now we have to go to the planning board and someone. I don't know. Bob, is that your end to figure that out or who? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into it. To be honest with you, and just follow the paper trail. Yeah, right. it's, it's, it's gonna be black and white. Yeah. 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 Somewhere okay. it went from pretty picture to not pretty picture. Yeah, it's gonna be in blueprints. Okay, it's like 10 of 10 now. So I wanna know what you wanna, I think we should wrap it up probably by 10. 
Yeah, because I'm gonna I'm gonna throw I got people all over the place here. Got a lot of activity right. happening. Right. Right. I sent everybody out the two family guidelines and, and I did read through them and there were a couple that I want to strike, but I'll send it out to everybody and everybody can tell me if they have anything they want to strike out for the next meeting, you know, and then um, we can all review it and talk about it at the next meeting. Um, and then there's a design review checklist that I wanted to go through. We can, since we only have like 10 more minutes, I don't know if it's worth starting now we could send out the design review check sheet. I just think we should all be on the same page with what we're asking for the applicant, what we expect to see. Um, I can share really quickly and then I can email it out to everybody. It's just a design review checklist about what, what we need at the informal meeting. what we expect from the landscaping plan, lighting, parking, sidewalk. You know, it's just a check sheet that me as a new person on the board and the chair, I know this is what's gonna happen at the first meeting, second meeting. This is what we're looking for. This is what the applicant has to bring. I just wanted to go back over a check sheet and um, I could send this out to everybody too and we could talk about it at the next meeting. I'd like Sounds to good. Uh, okay. And then the last thing on the agenda is um, Lisa had brought something forward about 89 West Main. I think she might have had some questions. Lisa, you could ask um, Bob while we have our last few minutes. Okay. So because I wasn't, I, I mean, Dave and Bob are probably the only two left that saw the original plans. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, and Which one's 89 West Main? Refresh my brain for a minute. Um, 89 West Main is at the corner of Monument. It was uh, oh, yeah, seven, yeah, I got it. Got seven it. residential yeah. units up top and three or four commercial on the bottom. That's the one that hasn't, it's been a mess. Yes. Right, right. And it continues to be a mess. Um, yep. Why don't I give you my little spiel on it and it may Go answer ahead. a bunch of your questions. <laughs> um, this was a, is, and it continues to be a very difficult project. Um, I'm not even sure who owns the building anymore without doing some research. Um, the building was constructed basically to code, but it had a bunch of conditions on it. And this, the site plan was approved and they constructed the building. They ran into financial issues and they begged and pleaded for a conditional occupancy for the residential only. Yeah. So they get some cash flow moving into that building, into the project. I said, I want an as built done by the engineer of record. And um, before I do that, so they submitted that to me and also Fred Litchfield. And though how the building was done pretty much to what was approved, they've got a pile of site plan issues that need to be resolved. Yes, and I told them, and I and, it, and it's a mess. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I've got a letter from the engineer, and I made my own notes on the true site plan. There's probably 15 to 20 things that need to be done. I mean, they, they've got they've actually encroached over the property line on other people's property yeah. for certain parts of the site plan. Um, and I told them that while I'm okay allowing them to the residents to get in because it's all safe for them. Um, and for them to start recuperating some of their money or get, generating some sort of cash flow. But I told them I would not under any circumstances issue any building permits for the commercial space down below until mm -hmm. all of the issues on the site plan are 100%. Yeah. So that's where it stands right now? That's where it stands right now. So, and that was what, two years ago? Uh, yeah. At least. My question is, he has it for sale. What if it sells and changes hands and then... It stays with the property, Amy. It stays with the property. stays with okay. the property. The, 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 the new owners assume responsibility for all of the issues that's going on in that property. They'll take on that burden, which will <laughs> may, well, it may force them not to sell it because if I got to buy the building and it's going to cost me a half a million dollars or 200,000 to fix it, whatever I pay you, I'm subtracting that from what I pay you because that sticks with the property. Mm -hmm. 
I just hope to say the buyer knows, you know, hopefully, you know. Well, the buyer, well, I think the buyer, you have to disclose it legally. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even you, you, you drive by that property, you can see it's a nightmare. Yeah. I've, well, I've actually had several people come to me with zoning interpretation forms for the commercial space downstairs. And, you know, after I do the review, would it be allowed in this area? Yeah, whatever. I also tell them that, you know, there is a, a, there is a laundry list of site plan issues that need to be complete and addressed before I even think about issuing or receiving an application for a building permit. Well, here's one of my questions is the ad that, um, that I saw, they're offering it to a buyer to, if they don't want to use the commercial, they can just change those those areas downstairs into residential. And they'd, have to go back, they'd have to go back to the board because that was a um, that was a special permit granted by the planning board. Yeah, for mixed use, if I recall. And it was ZBA. Use. It went to so, the ZBA. ZBA. Okay, so they're going to have to go back and either get a variance or whatever because to, to put it, to have that building be completely uh, residential, um, would have to go back to the boards. And I don't, I think you're probably looking at a use variance and I don't want to speak for the ZBA, but I don't see that happening. No. Because it's going to throw off your parking. It's going to throw off, you know, the facades. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, that, do you want to live in a storefront? Yeah. Cause that, that was built the parking lot when we did it, that was made for a storefront parking lot. The whole thing yes. the road, the parking was a special variance for the parking to face the road. Because all the parking was supposed to be behind the building. That was a whole, I mean, if I recall, four or five meetings just on that. It was a whole thing there. Mm -hmm. um, the landscape is an app that's there not to code in the landscape in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I can just keep going with a grocery list of stuff that's in my head from what I recall from that. It's a disaster there. Well, but I think Bob said it pretty simply. And, and the only leverage that you have over them is, is pretty fundamental. Keep your word, do what you promise to do, and then you can occupy the building. I agree. Because if you let them occupy it prior to that, you can't make them do anything. So I think, I think Bob's doing the right thing. He was being a good guy and went above and beyond by letting them occupy the top. And then you, you let them occupy the bottom, you're a fool. <laughs> Because then they just say, ha ha, tripped you. Yeah. Well, can we at least take that sign down that says coming soon? It's been about four years. It's come. If they want to they wanna advertise, then they should have a different kind of a sign. But that people have talked to me about the fact they're coming out of that street and they can't see because it uh, blocks their vision. That, that, that actually is on the engineer's report. And they took one sign down, and I think they didn't read the right report because they took the wrong sign down. Well, so they they are on my radar list of zoning issues to be fixed um, because yeah, that, that does create a blind spot in terms of what's on the sign lease. I, you know, if they if they're advertising, you know, full residential, that that's their issue, and, and they're going to have to, you know, they'll find out they're wrong at some point. But you know, they they can put anything they want on a sign. You know. well, well, I agree with you. Let, don't let them have any occupancy whatsoever. It's too no. much room there. No. And then the thing is, it, it, they, they've been, like I said, you know, the contractors were difficult. Uh, applicants were difficult. Um, you know, the, it, it really, it was, there's not a lot on this project that went smooth. And I'll just leave it at that. And is there anything that we can, some laws that we can have, like put a lien on them so that they can't sell until they fix? No. The burden goes on the buyer, Lisa, and the buyer should be acutely aware of the restrictions on the site. All right. Well, I'm glad we got to talk about it because it has been a lot of, lot of conversations and, um, and I'm you know, not having the background. Um, it's good to hear about it. Yeah. So, it um, those, uh, those issues were sent out to the owners uh, at the end of January in 2020. So that's what, two years now? Yeah. Isn't yeah. that, that when the sale for sale after that? 
Well, I think they had those, um, not the for sale sign, but the available for lease space signs up there, you know, before the, you know, that, that went up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, but they do have to move that big sign because it does represent a kind of a blind spot. Well, I think it was a good discussion overall today with everything we talked about, you know, usually we have applicants, so we don't get to do any sort of planning or talking or so I thought this was great and and thanks for everybody for coming. And um, and I want to say it seems like we work together like a really good team, which I think is a great thing. Yep. What that's worth. I felt comfortable. It seemed like there were no agendas, but the right thing. And, and hats off to everybody for that. I agree. I agree. Did a great job. Amy. And, uh, and I, this is what it should be, that we can have discussion and learn and create since we're creative, right? The design review is supposed to be all about creative. Right. And solve problems, which is what we're trying to do. Right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thanks. So um, we'll, I'll send out some stuff over the next month for our next meeting next month that weekend. We, we have to formally on. adjourn. We do have to formally adjourn. Okay. Anybody make a motion that we adjourn? <laughs> I make them. I so move the motion. I'll second. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Um, I'll take a roll call vote. Lisa Maselli. Aye. Dario Damari. Aye. And Dave Varian.